In a shocking turn of events, the worst restaurant in Magic Kingdom has actually become one of my favorites. And they have a brand new menu. That's right. We're heading to Tony's Town Square restaurant for lunch. And then afterwards, we're going to go pay our respects and say farewell to the Country Bears one final time. <laughs> We are going to kick this thing off with lunch at Tony's, which you heard me say. I used to not be a fan, and I know this restaurant just gets so much hate, but I don't think it's warranted. I dined here a couple of months ago, um, and it was the first time in a while that I'd been here, and I was prepared to absolutely hate it. But I really had a great meal and enjoyed it. So when I saw they had some new menu items, I knew I had to make my return. Now, Tony's is an Italian-American restaurant here in Magic Kingdom. As soon as you walk into the park, it's in the Town Square Theater. And it is an Italian-American restaurant. So by no means am I saying this is an authentic Italian restaurant, because it's not. That's not what we're here for. But food doesn't always have to be authentic to taste good. And Magic Kingdom surely does not have the best food or the best restaurants. And if you would have told me like six months ago that I'd consider Tony's to be in the top three restaurants in Magic Kingdom, I would have told you that you're crazy. But it's pretty high up there. So let's head in and check it out. We are all checked in and one of the bonuses of coming to Tony's is that you can sit in these rocking chairs while you wait for your table to be ready. But you don't have to be dining at Tony's to sit in them. I like sitting in them at all times. I have a personal rocker. This is weird. <laughs> All right, our table is ready and we have requested to sit outside. We're doing a little al fresco dining here in Magic Kingdom. This is the only restaurant in Magic Kingdom that you could actually sit outside at. And we have a beautiful, beautiful view of Main Street, the vehicles going by. I think the parade might be here soon. So yeah, this is really nice. I've actually never sat outside here, but I had been wanting to do it for so long. I just kept thinking like, imagine just watching the parade on a beautiful day like today. The temperature is perfect. Pop in a bottle of champagne because they also have alcohol here and watching Festival of Fantasy. I don't know. That sounds like a great day to me. <laughs> now Juliet is making fun of me. Oh yeah, Juliet's here. I, from the West Coast, I feel like I see Juliet actually more than my friends that live in Orlando and she literally lives in LA. Um, but she's- Cause I'm also gonna see you next week as well <laughs> yeah. in California. Yeah, um, well, I'm posting this video while I'm already in Disneyland. So we'll also be together then. But yeah, Juliet is here and she's laughing at me because I said I wanted to pop a bottle during Festival of Fantasy. I feel like it's more like maybe share a glass of orange juice over the Festival of Fantasy or something. I don't know, it doesn't really mix the champagne that is true if i had if this restaurant was in disneyland and i was just sitting there with this view watching magic happens the parade in disneyland i i will admit that's that you could pop some champagne you could pop more than champagne to that <laughs> and also ryan is here he's already made a bunch of like jokes that he thinks are funny about tony's because he's never dined juliet's never dined here first ever and ryan's never dined here either uh, I actually have, but back in the day when it was known as Anthony's, it was a little bit more classic Italian then, and now it's, um, we're going with some more interesting stuff, like impossible meatballs, whatever that is. They're impossible. He also made a couple jokes about Olive Garden. Um, so yeah, here we are. And yes, I know I'm going to get a bunch of Olive Garden comments, I'm sure, um, but I already addressed that. Not all good tasting food has to be authentic. And obviously this is nowhere near authentic, but I, I still think it tastes good. Sometimes, you know, like a, a crappy chicken parm or fettuccine Alfredo, not authentic, but it just hits sometimes. Speaking of food, let's take a look over the menu at these appetizers here. There are definitely some hits in the apps category. They have Tony's garlic bread for the table. Fantastic. A Caesar salad, a house salad. Over here, they have fried mozzarella, which are huge mozzarella sticks. They also have a caprese salad and a seasonal soup, which is somehow always Italian wedding soup. That's the season, the one season. When I came here a couple months back, I came specifically for that garlic bread. And let me tell you, it did not disappoint. My good friend Bethany told me about it. She's made a bunch of videos on it. and. I, I took her advice and it was fantastic. So we're definitely gonna have to order that again. And then I've got my eye on these mozzarella sticks. My friend Promise made a video about them not too long ago. They're kind of new to the menu and they are humongous. I wanna say like foot long mozzarella sticks. So I'm really excited to have the garlic bread again and really excited to try these mozzarella sticks. The apps have arrived and let me tell you, they are smelling and looking delicious. The first thing I wanna dive into are the mozzarella sticks. This this is the fried mozzarella. It's served with a spicy, creamy tomato sauce for 15 bucks. All right, we are gonna be going for a cheese pull here, and good thing this came with two because Julie already, Juliet already did one, and it, it was quite impressive. 
Well, let's see what we could get here. That was not as impressive as I had hoped. <laughs> but let's see how this tastes. I'm gonna go for a dip in that like creamy tomato sauce there. It's good, but I definitely wanted a bigger cheese pull, even on that bite. Let's see if I could get one with my second bite. <laughs> Just a clean break. I mean, it's good. The breading could be a little bit crispier, but I like how light the breading is. There's a ton of mozzarella in there. And I also wish there was more of that tomato sauce on the plate because the tomato sauce that's on the plate is delicious. I understand that Kristen was a little bit disappointed from her cheese pole that she got, but like, I feel like I, I film so much with other creators and they every, team, every single time they film a cheese pole, they expect it to be like some really like uh, dramatic and it does work for short form on like views and stuff. Like people are like, oh, that's so good. But also like, they're expecting it to be something ridiculous. Like you could jump rope with this cheese that you pull from a single, I know it's a foot long, whatever, uh, cheese stick. What is this? Is mozzarella is mozzi. It's a mozzi. But like, I don't. That's something Juliet would say. No, that's what it's called, right? I think that's what it's called. But yeah, they're expecting it to be ridiculous. Maybe Kristen should like get one of, one of the bungee cords that you like strap something to the top of your roof on your car, but like color it like. Uh, the same color as cheese and then just like hold it behind the cheese pole so that you just automatically get a good cheese pole. I just like a good cheese pole. It's like aesthetically pleasing. Like, I don't know, if I'm eating something super cheesy, I want to see how cheesy it is before I put it in my mouth. And I mean, the mozzarella sticks, they were, they were okay. They were pretty average. Um, I did want a little bit more, again, more sauce. There's really not enough on there. Um, but after all the hype, I kind of expected more from them. Well, now that I have eaten more mozzarella cheese than the average human should eat in like a month, I'm going to try a piece of the garlic bread. This is the Tony's garlic bread for the table. It's a toasted ciabatta with roasted garlic butter and Parmesan fonduta for $13. There is a cheesy piece left, so I think I need to grab that one. And while I was kind of disappointed by the mozzarella stick, I know I will not be disappointed by this. Mm. This, seriously, is some of the best garlic bread. I love that cheese that you get to pour on top. I honestly wish there was even more cheese because my piece here is covered, but some of the pieces more towards the bottom are not. This is a delicious garlic bread, a must order if you come to Tony's. The garlic bread was actually 10 out of 10, I gotta say. Like, it's saucy, it's delicious. It's got good crunch still. I personally had a better cheese pull. I, I pulled another mozzarella stick. My cheese pull was a little more impressive, and I don't know if it's technique or form. I'm not gonna imply that Kristen doesn't have good cheese pull, pulling form, but maybe, maybe there's something there. Our lunch just came out, and look at this. We're having a lunch and a show. The high school marching band is coming by, and they're from New Jersey. The other new menu item that I really wanted to try today was the rigatoni a la vodka, and I have been on a massive vodka sauce kick lately. I've been making it homemade at home a ton, and I was inspired originally to make it at home from the rigatoni a la vodka from Summer House, the newest restaurant in Disney Springs, and I love it there. I think it is delicious. This is the rigatoni a la vodka. It's rigatoni tossed in a classic tomato vodka sauce topped with Parmesan herb breadcrumbs for 24 bucks. And upon first glance, I do not have the highest of hopes. It doesn't look like there's enough sauce on this pasta here, but we'll see. That's so dry. The flavor of the sauce is good, but it is really, really just so, so dry. It, I, I need a lot more sauce on this. Kid in the tree. Literally, there's currently a kid climbing in a tree. Literally in a tree. Up on top of the little like planters, way above, in a tree. Hanging on the branch. Yeah, hanging on the branch. Wow. I am gonna add some crushed red pepper to it though. Make a little spicy vodka rigatoni. And I don't know, they gave us some Parmesan cheese, so might as well add a little bit of that as well. I'll tell you, those pieces when you get more sauce, are really, really good. I want you guys to try this because Julia is dogging this. And I will admit, it doesn't look the best, but I want her to try it because I think it is pretty tasty when you get that sauce in there. Grab a piece, grab a piece of my pasta, please. 
you want me to take a piece of your pasta? Take a piece of my pasta. <laughs> take a piece of my pasta. But get it, but get it from, get it from I'm the going bottom. With the saucy bit. Yeah, make sure you get it from I'm the bottom with all that sauce. Excuse for making it all sad and dry on the top. I don't want a sad, dry any part of my yeah, penne alla vodka. Okay. It's fine. It's kind of salty. It doesn't have as, like as much tomato flavor as I want. Yeah, I think it's mid. I think I, I appreciate it's not dry at the bottom, but it's mid. I mean, I'm not saying this is like the best vodka sauce I ever had, but I'm currently sitting on the patio of Tony's Town Square restaurant in Magic Kingdom with a view of Main Street. The parade's are about to come by, and I'm eating vodka pasta. I mean, it's not bad. I'd get it again. Our server, Brendan, to the rescue. Um, he asked for my review of the pasta and I let him know that it was really tasty but a little bit dry and it needed a little bit more sauce and he said he could bring me a side of sauce so I got a side of vodka sauce here and I'm gonna pour that right on top um, and this should make it even better all right now we are talking an extra saucy here that is just what this pasta needed what I do want to do is grab a piece of this garlic bread and dip it into my vodka sauce what? here. She's crazy. She's Whoa. gone nuts. <laughs> this is the most innovative. What? This is an innovative doing here, guys. I will say with the addition of the extra sauce, yes, it makes the pasta less dry and more flavorful. It is definitely a little more salty. When Juliet said it was salty when she first tried it, I wasn't getting it then. But then after I added the more sauce, now I'm getting a lot of salt. But it's still good. I don't think it's better than the chicken Alfredo here, which pretty much just tastes like Olive Garden chicken Alfredo. But I, I mean, you really can't go wrong with that. So I ordered the chicken parm on Brendan, our waiter's recommendation. I gotta say, this was actually delicious. And I was skeptical, because Tony's, you know, you hear a lot about Tony's, but the chicken was actually really, it was moist. The outside was actually really crispy. And then I threw a little bonus like red pepper flakes on there. That was great. The spaghetti, I think, is totally a skip, but the chicken parm, I would order again. I got the Impossible Spaghetti and Meatballs. I love the Impossible brand meat that they have here all over Disney World, except if it doesn't say Impossible and it's plant-based, I probably won't have it because that's the only brand I trust. It was very, very good. I got too much crushed red pepper on top. Um, I would highly recommend it, and clearly, because I think I'm the only one who almost nearly finished their food. It was really, really good. I loved it. Well, we are done with our lunch. And usually when I finish these restaurant reviews, I like to end with a little sweet tweet. Um, but I think I'm going to skip on dessert here at Tony's. Last time I got like the strawberry, Italian strawberry shortcake, and it was really, really horrible. Now they do have some other things on the menu that kind of caught my eye, but I'm, I have my mind on something else from here in Magic Kingdom. So we're going to head out and we're going to watch the Country Bear Jamboree and then we are going to grab a little sweet treat. Well, guys, now that we have filled our bellies with some pasta, we have made our way over here to Frontierland to see the Country Bears farewell tour. I'm sad to see it go, but it's coming back in a different way. Not only do I think the show is hilarious and inappropriate, that's why I like it. It's kind of like for the adults, I feel. Um, but also, it's just such a great place. There's never a line. You just walk in there, take a seat, wait for the next show, get some nice AC. This is also Sister Walnuts favorite attraction at Disney World. She absolutely loves the Country Bears, so we're sad to see it go in the Wright household. Right, Ryan Wright? I'm happy. I do have a little bit of information on the redo for Country Bear Jamboree that I would like to share with you. One being that they are doing a lot of Disney songs in this one. That's what they've said. The only one confirmed is the Bear Necessities from the Jungle Book, as well as one of the studio musicians who plays on this, who was seen in the promotional video for it, is actually a, ses a session musician for Jimmy Buffett. Fun fact, the plane on City Walk has a really interesting story. If you guys have never seen it, I want everyone to go on Disney Plus tonight and I want you to watch the Country Bears movie. It's on Disney Plus and I think it's honestly like a great movie. I watched it for the first time during COVID with my roommates and I made this like really funny joke. It's honestly one of my favorite like memories of the Country Bears and it didn't even happen here. I My roommate was like so confused how they filmed the movie and I said, yeah, like they closed the Country Bear Jamboree in Magic Kingdom um, for a couple months so that they could go on tour and film this movie. My roommate like low key believed me. She was like, con she, like she was like thinking in her head like uh, the logistics of that. And then I was finally like, I'm, I'm joking. Um, they're obviously animatronics and not real bears, but yeah. So the Country Bear movie is really good. Excuse me, sir, have you ever seen the Country Bear movie? 
I have, and I like it a lot. I think it's really good. That's uh, I, I, I think it's got a great story, and I think that's something that this refurb needs is a villain. I think Christopher Walken plays one of the best villains of all time in the Country Bear movie, and I think if they come back and there's a Christopher Walken animatronic who's like, we're going to tear down Country Bear Hall or whatever it's called, I think that would probably be a... Grizzly Hall. Grizzly Hall, that's what it's called. <laughs> I'm great. I'm a big fan, can't you tell? Well, guys, it's a very, very sad day for us Country Bear fans. I wore my shirt, my Shop LBV Country Bear shirt, to uh, bid my farewell. I really like the show. I know, like, it's probably not that appropriate and stuff. The songs and the jokes are not that appropriate, but I feel like that was, that's what makes it so funny for us, you know, Disney adults. Um, and I really enjoy it, so I'm sad to see it go, but it, it's gonna get refurbished, so it'll just be back in a different way. While I am a fan of the Country Bears, I know Ryan is not. He's got he's a bunch of crybabies over here. Listen, they're gonna plus it up. It's gonna be way better than it was before, and the kids will know the songs. You know, I, I, I definitely understand the sentiment of every guy that turns me on turns me down. <laughs> But it's time to go. It's time to pack their little bonnets up and uh, move on to pastures anew. Um, I'm excited for the new Country Bear, and it's going to be way better, but I guess I'll see it one more time. Are you ready to clap your hands and stomp your feet? I'm ready to clap these cheeks. Oh my god, that's staying in. All I will say, though, is this theater better be hype for the show. I want clapping, I want stopping, I want singing, I want it all. Howdy, folks. Welcome to the one and only This is the type of energy I need in this show. Oh yeah, everyone's clapping along. Come on, Ryan, sing. And all the guys are turning me on, turn me down. Here she comes. Swinging Teddy Barra. I also loves when, love when he says, as soon as I find my ladder, I'll be right up. <laughs> Blood on the sand. And blood all around. And a great big puddle. Blood on the ground. Clap, clap, clap. Well, what a show. I hope you guys get to see part of their farewell tour before they are gone. This show will officially close on January 27th, I believe. I believe so. January 27th, and will reopen a kind of new attraction. I, I think they're gonna keep some of the things the same, but they're gonna change up a majority of it. And I definitely am pretty sad to see it go, but I'm excited to see what they come up with. Hopefully it, it pays its respects to the Country Bears properly. I will miss Big Al being here um, for the six months or so that it is closed though. Big Al, I wanna give you a final goodbye before you go into hibernation, yes. right? Hibernation? Oh, you I wore it just for you, I wore it just for you. <laughs> Thanks, big Al. <laughs> Can we take a photo together? Awesome. But now that we have met Big Al, I think we should get one of his big bear claws. It's time for a little sweet treat. And yeah, we're going to get a bear claw here. Just kidding. I must pivot and find something else. Uh, usually they have a bear claw over at Westward Ho. However, when I went over there, I saw that it was not on the menu. And they let me know that they think it's only a breakfast thing, but I've gotten it there like at night in the dark multiple times. So I don't know if that's changed or not, but maybe you could just get a bear claw during the day. I tried to get, you know, stay on theme with the country bears snack. Um, but yeah, I don't know what to get now. 
Well, after the bear claw debacle, I honestly just wasn't feeling any other dessert here in Magic Kingdom. So I just decided to go super basic and get one of the frozen bananas. Now, I've only had this one other time before. And the first time I tried it, I was like, how have I never tried this? This is actually really, really good. Um, so I decided to keep it simple. I just wanted a little chocolate, you know, so I got myself a frozen banana with chocolate and peanuts. So cheers, guys. Ending with a little sweet treat. It's so good. Such a classic. Can't go wrong. Well, guys, in an effort to be fully transparent and honest with you guys, like I always aim to be, uh, Tony's made me feel a little bit sick. Um, so after I ate that frozen banana, yeah, I wasn't feeling too hot. And then it started raining. So not the best end to my day in Magic Kingdom. I know Ryan was feeling a little sick as well. So I don't know what Tony's did to us, but man... Tasted good, but it's going to be a while before I go back there. I am going to thank some Patreon subscribers from here. Angela, Ashley, Barbara, the Calcanes family, Catherine, Lindsay, Misty, Shelby, Stephen, Adam and Jen, Anne, Brittany, Karis, Chelsea, Carol, Daniela, Marcel, Dante, Dustin and Nancy, Emily, Ethan, John Paul, Christina, Leah, Tori, Lisa, the Martell family, Michael, Paul, Pickle, the Latham Thomas family, Tracy, and Wayne. Thank you guys. And yeah, if you've even made it this far in the video, thank you guys for watching. Um, I appreciate it. And hopefully the next restaurant I eat at doesn't make me feel sick. So there's that. Bye guys. <laughs>